Welcome to Cinemeric Live, Application Technology Made Easy. The aim of this series of short videos is to present specific topics on the practical use of Cinemeric. Today, we'll continue with the sixth part of our special video series on the extensive topic of flexible CNC programming. In this video, I'll be presenting some more interesting Cinemeric CNC language commands. You should have watched all of the first five episodes of this video series beforehand, as the videos build on each other in terms of content. If you've already done so, you'll know that I always recommend the use of a digital twin of the CNC and that I myself use Run My Virtual Machine, the virtual Cinemeric one for this purpose. First of all, let's take a closer look at handling text variables. In video number two, I already mentioned that I'd be dealing with this topic in more detail later. These text variables, also known as strings, can also contain current manufacturing information. In the second half of this video, I'll show you how you can store this manufacturing information from the text variables in log files. Now let's take a closer look at these so-called strings. Strings are based on characters. As you can see, the CNC program is already open. First, I define a variable of the type character. It will hold exactly one character. Then, I create a string type variable and give this text variable a certain size. In our example here, it's 100 characters. By the way, a string variable is nothing more than a one-dimensional array of the variable type character. Next, I assign the string 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 7, 8, 9 to the created string variable named myString. As you can see, there's a gap at 5 in this string which I now want to fill. To do this, I assign the digit 5 to the character variable and write this character to index 5 in the string variable. Remember that an array index always starts with 0, so 5 is actually the sixth digit. Then I output the text as a message on the CNC screen. But let's take another look at the two local user variables. During the CNC program runtime, they're located in the parameters operating area in the user variable screen local LUD. Here, the my character variable now shows 53. But why? Quite simply, that's because 53 is the ASCII value of the digit 5. And in the my string variable, the previous gap is now filled with the digit 5. Now let's look at an example of how strings can be concatenated. For this purpose, I first define a string variable with the name time, and then three integer variables with the names hour, minute, and second. I assign the current hour to the hour variable, which I read from the system variable $a underscore hour. Remember, system variables are automatically provided by Cinemeric and always start with a dollar sign. You can find more details in the Cinemeric list manual of system variables. Now the current minutes and seconds are read out and I first assign the fixed text straight double quote time colon blank straight double quote to the string variable. This is followed by a language command consisting of two less than signs which is used to concatenate strings. The content of the hour variable is simply appended with the help of this language command. For better readability, I put a fixed text consisting of a colon between hour and minute. I do the same for adding the content of the second variable. Let's take a closer look at our three integer variables called hour, minute and second. They now have the values 10, 33 and 20. The Cinemeric string concatenation automatically converts the three integer variables into the appropriate strings. 
By the way, the conversion of data types is not only performed automatically for text variables. Integers are also automatically converted to floating point numbers and vice versa. I'll show you a nice example of what you can do with concatenated string variables later. Before that, let's read out the current program name. The subprogram with the name my underscore subprogram dot SPF is opened here in the example. First, I define a string variable called name and assign the fixed text name colon blank to it. The name of the current program is now read from the system variable $p underscore prog 0 and linked with the fixed text just defined. The only question now is what the index 0 is all about. In the last video, I mentioned the nesting of CNC programs and we saw that Cinemeric can handle a total of 18 program levels. You therefore have to be specific when reading out the program name. The index 0 means that the name of the topmost calling program is to be read out. So in this example, it means that the name of the calling main program is read. The name of the calling main program can now be read directly from the string variable name on the user interface. underscore n underscore my underscore main program underscore mpf. Now let's move on to the second part of this video which deals with the logging of manufacturing information that we've prepared in text variables. To show you how this works, I've opened a logging subprogram in the editor. First, I define an integer variable called error. We'll see why in a moment. We've already created and filled the two text variables, name and time. This is followed by the language command that's used to write text to log files. It's called write. The first parameter of the write command is error. If the write command was faulty, for example, because the CNC memory was full, error would contain a value other than zero. The next parameter is the name of the log file. In our case, time underscore protocol. If this file doesn't yet exist, it will be created. If it already exists, the text is added at the end. The third parameter is the name variable. The content of this variable is appended to the end of the log file. This is followed by another write command. Here, a timestamp is added using the time parameter. In the third write command, the empty text in the third parameter of the command creates an empty line in the log file. In the following if end if control structure, error contains a value other than zero if something goes wrong when writing. Should this happen, a message would be output to the CNC screen. Now let's consider the log file. It has the extension MPF and is actually nothing more than a CNC program. The first line of an entry contains the name of the calling program, here, my underscore main program. The second line of the entry shows the time. In the first entry, the indicated time is 1 p.m. 11 minutes and 31 seconds. As can be seen from the log file, this program was started two more times. Let's take a look at the CNC workpiece folder, Cinemeric Live. The calling main program is located here, as well as the subprogram for logging. The log file can also be found here. If no other storage location is explicitly specified in the write command, the log file is stored in the same folder as the program with the write command. In this example, the write command was in the subprogram. Now, here's an interesting example. If, as a CNC programmer, I want to know when my program was used in production, I can write a timestamp directly into the executed CNC program. To do this, we expand the logging subprogram. The variable for time already exists, but the variable for the date is still missing. For this purpose, the month, day and year are read from the system variables and concatenated to form a text variable. Then, 
The write command follows again with the parameter for possible errors. We use the system variable for the current program as the name. Zero addresses the top level, that is, our main program, and that's exactly where we add the text lines. First, a line with the fixed text executed. This is followed by the date and the time, and then a blank line. At the end, the if end if control structure appears once again, in order to react to any errors that may occur when writing. If we look at the main program now, we notice that our message lines have been added after M30. Each program call has been logged here with date and time. And we can see in the workpiece folder that the log file is now the main program. So, that's it for now. In our last video, I'll be presenting a few more highly useful language commands. And finally, my usual advice, don't miss the CNC for You newsletter, because it contains all the latest news and interesting facts about using Cinemeric. That's it for today, thank you for watching and see you next time.